This week I unlocked a new milestone in my tennis career. I appeared in my first ever Challenger Tour event in Koblenz, Germany. I appeared on a court with a capacity of thousands and teamed up with a player who's beaten both Novak and Rafa. Yes guys, so this week I'm playing my first ever Challenger Tour tournament here in Koblenz, Germany. But what actually is a Challenger tournament and how does it differ from the ITF tournaments I play on a weekly basis? Let's break it down and take a look. So the first thing we're talking about, which is the elephant in the room at all of these events, is prize money. Now at a tournament like this, as you can see, there's loads of different sponsors which are gonna help sponsor the event, which allows the tournament to pay much higher levels of prize money. But just how much is the difference between a Futures tournament like what I played in Spain last week and this tournament that I'm playing here? Let's take a look. For losing in the first round of the singles main draw in Manacor, I would have received $156 in prize money. However, here at a 100 Challenger, I would have received $1,500 just for turning up for the first round. But obviously, people have higher expectations of winning their first round. So what happens if you win the whole event for singles? Well, at a 50K event, you'll receive $2,160 for winning the whole event. And here you would receive $18,000. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference, almost nine times the difference here at this Challenger event, which makes it a lot more affordable for the players if they do well to fund their tennis. Today's video is brought to you in paid partnership with BetterHelp. We put hours and hours into training our bodies physically, but what about our mental help? Well, thanks to BetterHelp, they're here for you. And of course, with me competing in the Koblenz Open in doubles, I also get some prize money, which is actually 400 euros just for myself, which will actually be my biggest earning singular event for doubles in my entire career so far. Of course, if we go further, it will double every single round. Constantly competing and playing matches can be very mentally tough. And I know it might seem strange, but I do find myself sometimes getting negative and anxious before, after, and during matches. Now on the ITF tour, tennis really isn't a spectator sport. However, here at the Challenger event, as you can see, there's seating, hundreds of people are coming every single day to watch all of the players, and it makes the players, and obviously myself playing, feel like a real professional tennis player. And the actual capacity here at the Koblenz Open is nearly 6,000 people. So if this place is absolutely packed, the atmosphere is gonna be unbelievable, which of course is nothing like you get on the ITF tour, where maybe you have your coach and the local stringer watching your match. Starting therapy can be hard if you don't have a therapist in your area. And of course, some people find face-to-face -face interaction quite uncomfortable. BetterHelp makes that process much easier as you can have your sessions via a video chat, a phone call, or just via text messages. If you think you might benefit from therapy, click the link in the description or check out betterhelp.com forward slash tennis brothers. Now, one of the most important categories, ATP points. This is what we're all here for, ATP points to improve our rankings, to rise up to play the bigger tournaments. Now, at a 25K ITF event, you can expect for winning your first round to get one point, your second round to get three, all the way up to 25 points if you win the entire title. However, at a challenger tournament like this, just for winning your first round, you're getting seven points. And if you manage to make it all the way to the final, you get 100 points, which is four times more than the ITF tour. Now, obviously I'm only playing doubles this week, so what do the doubles points look like? For winning your first round in a doubles 25K, which I've done quite a few times, is three points. However, this week I have the opportunity to win 20 points if I win my first round, which would absolutely catapult me up the rankings, almost doubling my points. Fingers crossed I can get that done, but if not, then you're gonna have to keep grinding on the ITF tournaments. Our brain is like a muscle and you can exercise it to help keep it strong. If you think you benefit from a stronger brain, click the link in the description to get 10% of your first month of better help so that you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And of course, it also helps to support the channel. And finally, the main thing about these events is the organization that is so much better than at the Futures tournaments. You get the free accommodation up until the day that you lose, you even get free water, which makes it so much more affordable for the players to actually compete at this level. Thank you to Lars for giving me the wild card into the tournament this week. But now let's take a look at my preparation and of course, the match. As you saw a few weeks ago, I was competing in Spain at the Rafa Nadal Academy, playing some tournaments out there. So we took a flight all the way to Germany to get going with the event. So our first hit in the venue was of course with my doubles partner, but who was it? Well, this week I was playing with Martin Klesan, former world number 24 in the world and 73 in the world in doubles. Martin won six singles ATP titles along with four ATP doubles titles. He's also beaten two of the GOATs, Djokovic and Nadal, as well as having earned over five and a half million dollars in prize money. It's a lot more than me. Martin's currently making a comeback in singles and doubles, hence why he's playing this tournament. He actually managed to qualify already, beating players inside the world's top 300, losing in the main draw to a player ranked 190th but he's trying to make a comeback on the tour to so make sure you watch him on his journey back. Here, I was warming him up for his match. This was also my first opportunity to play on the court, which played slightly hollow and slightly differently to some of the other hard courts, but it gave me a sense 
of what was to come and I was super excited. So after that hit with Martin, it was straight to the practice center to work on some specific areas with my coach Paul. During this week, it's essential that I make sure I'm fine tuning my singles game, working on specific areas and making sure that I'm fine tuning for the season ahead. This was especially working on my backhand, hitting cross, serves, and of course some volleys to finish with some reflex volleys which I'd be using in my doubles. So match day rolled around and we arrived at the arena. I was nervous, apprehensive, excited, everything kind of bundled into one. I was so looking forward to playing my first challenger tournament. The crowd, the atmosphere, the professionalism, the opponents, everything was amazing and I was super looking forward to it. So 6 p.m. it was time to jump on court with Martin. We only had about 15 minutes before another match started on that court. Again, knowing it was gonna be a late start, we just wanted to go through the basics, hit balls up and down the middle, crosses, volleys. There was already a crowd of people watching us at this point, so it was great to kind of have that energy and excitement, the build up, getting ready for the match and definitely the nerves and the excitement were, were kind of calming me down in a little bit. It was a bit of an overload, so you know, just tried to stay focused on exactly what I was doing. I didn't really let that affect me too much. And then the waiting game began. Hours of waiting to know whether we'd be going on in 10 minutes or in an hour. Basically, the match was still playing, and so we never really knew whether it was going to a third set, whether it was gonna go into a break. And so essentially, I had to stay warm, make sure that I was staying focused. I was having a little bit of a chit chat with Marcus and my brother and trying to just keep as calm as possible because if you, you know, get into that zone too much, you're just gonna to be too focused and waste all of that nervous energy. But I think overall, it kind of made me excited for the match because it had that huge build up, but also a little bit nervous, especially because we'd had to wait so long. And another thing guys, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I will personally phone Martin and ask him to play doubles at another tournament in the future. So go down there and drop a like. And so finally, time rolled around to get on court who were we up against? This pairing was Christian Harrison and Marcus Willis. Some of you may know Marcus Willis from playing Federer on the centre court of Wimbledon. They're both ranked around 140 and 150 at the time of this recording. And so it was going to be a great test for me and Martin, the two wildcards. So my first challenger match gets underway with Marcus Willis serving. Definitely a pleasure to, to share the court with all of these players. It was an unbelievable experience playing with Martin. So much experience on the court. He was so relaxed, which was the crazy thing. I was a little bit tight, a little bit nervous. You can see me here going on 30 love in my first service game, but Martin was super relaxed. He helped me calm down on the court and uh, really helped me enjoy the experience as much as possible. And I think the more as this match develops, the better I played and the more I began to enjoy it. But it didn't start off great. You know, I go 40 love down in my first service game is never what you want for confidence. You really want to win that first service game and, and feel like you've got the energy going your way. Playing in front of a crowd of maybe 100 people, I want to say. It was about 11 o'clock in the evening, so it was pretty late. So, you know, appreciated any of the support. Volleys like that were, were insane, uh, to be honest. I, I, I almost didn't know that kind of what I was doing. It was just my body kind of reaction. Uh, shots like that as well. You know, Marcus showing why he's such a good doubles player. Uh, but I, I definitely began to, to enjoy myself and I could feel that I was playing good. I could feel that my hands were good. I could feel that everything was crisp. So I definitely thought that, you know, this is, this is going to be a good opportunity here to see really where the level's at. How far am I away from these guys ranked 140, 130 in the world who are, you know, winning challenges. Uh, you can see first sudden death point here at 3-love, um, a huge point. So whoever wins this either goes 4-love or 3-1 and we definitely didn't want to go 4-love down. That's going to be a huge deficit, especially with new balls at 7-9, I think it was. A great drop shot volley there from me. Again, not quite sure how I did it, but I did do it, which is the main thing. And, you know, they had great coordination here with the lefty smashes, managing to put that ball right where it was, uh, you know, hurtful to us. And this time on my serve, I, I made to, well, I played a lot more confidently in my service game. Uh, forcing a lot more errors from them and playing better. Those two balls from Christian, you just wouldn't come back at futures level. So there are a lot of times where, you know, the points were definitely longer than I expected. I almost kind of preemptively stopped playing in my head a little bit. So I had to make sure that, you know, I expected every ball to come back, absolutely hustled and like that, made sure that I hunted every single ball down. And another sudden death juice point here, the second on our serve, we knew how important this one was again to really try and consolidate that momentum of one game on, one game off. Because if you let your opponents run away with it, it could be a very, very quick match in doubles. And points like that, the one twos, were really what me and Martin were trying to do. You know, he said, look, I'm gonna serve here, try and poach, or I'm gonna serve here, get low at the net and play eye. Really having some good instruction. 
Unfortunately, then going down, losing the first set, you know, these two guys were absolutely clinical on their service games. It was like, you know, surgeons at work uh, every single game, spot serving, really making it tough for us to win points. And this was the toughest kind of confidence thing in the doubles was, you know, these guys are going to win their serve unless we play an unbelievable game. How We have to hold serve to make sure that we're not giving them any opportunities. And, um, you know, other than losing that first service game, the last five service games, we've been able to do that. So me and Martin, when we were sitting down, basically said, look, let's try and keep doing what we're doing, win, win our service games. Points like this definitely consolidated that. Great reactions from me at the net. Again, not quite sure how I did it, but it paid off. And a chance here to to close out a further service game to to carry on that lead in this first set. I prefer serving first to be honest as well because you know you've got that that little cushion even if you know you're not up on a break on serve. And a great lob from me there, paying off to go three two up. You know, really enjoying the crowd, enjoying the atmosphere, enjoying the experience. I had my whole family there watching as well, which was great. And uh, yeah, obviously sharing the court with such great doubles players, I learned so much, you know, where they were standing, how they were serving. I'm sure as you guys can watch, you can see how clinical these guys are and how good their hands are at the net. They're not making any dumb volley mistakes or, or un unnecessary, basically, mistakes. But points like that, again, were great for myself, hustling a lob. And again, Martin here on that juice point. Go, I said to him, look, go cross, go cross. Give me a chance to try and come poach it at the net. And I do. Christian makes the ball, but I managed to close it out. And once again, we win a sudden death juice point. You know, Marcus was great in terms of touch and feel. So we definitely said to him, let's try and play it, you know, away from him at the net. Absolutely hustled on that point. This was my last service game before we played a set tie break. So definitely wanted to get through this one. I definitely think Martin served slightly better under the pressure than I did, especially as you saw at the beginning of the match. But you know, what Martin did well is he read the court so well. Tactically, he kind of knew what we were doing. There are a few opportunities, I think, where you know, he, he made the right calls at the right time. And you know, serving here at five all, this is exactly who we wanted on serve um, to make sure that we kind of secure a tie break. But Marcus coming across there last minute at the net, forcing it down low to my feet. You know, they've got two break point opportunities here that essentially match points. And I managed to put away that ball at the net. Here I said, Martin, put the serve kind of body backhand and hope for a mistake, and we do get it. And uh, we've definitely secured a set tie break. And you know, anything can happen in these tie breaks. We definitely wanted to put some pressure on them in this in this final service game but they play a solid game, don't give us really any chances. And in this set tie break, you know, me and Martin are pumped now. We're saying, look, every single point, we've got to focus. We've got to play to kind of, you know, where they don't want the ball. And we get a chance here to go, you know, three level up and get a double break on their serve. And I have an easy smash, which I put long, which in hindsight was so painful. I was uh, really annoyed at myself, to be honest, actually. Uh, but I made up for it in this point. Low little half volley, put the ball cross. Great point play from me. Um, you know, going through one up in this tiebreak. Definitely, I could feel the the match tiebreak uh, and the 20 ATP points that would come along with it. Right in our grasp here. You know, three two. Definitely want to switch sides at four two. You know, Martin. I said play to Christian. He was breaking down slightly more in the rallies. Uh, Marcus coming across there and that getting a net cord. Me going cross and Marcus pre-firing on that volley, which is just insane. You know, in hindsight. Should have maybe just gone really hard at him. I don't know, really. Uh, and again, another unfortunate point here. Marcus playing the great angle, running out of space to run. And 4 all is a massive point. Again, Marcus coming across really well at the last second. That's where the experience pays off. A little bit of indecision on our part, causing the mistakes. You know, they go 6-4 up, and, and at that point, they win the match. But what a great experience. So after the match, I talked to Lars, the tournament organiser. He organised an amazing tournament this year. Thank you once again, Lars, for the wild card. I'm really hoping to come back next year and keep playing at the challenger level. It was an unbelievable experience. I managed to sign a few balls, take some pictures as well. Thank you to all of the fans that stayed out. It was really late there in Germany. And of course, here's what I had to say after the match. I think all in all was a, a very, very solid effort. Um, played some really good doubles. I think I handled the nerves very well. Uh, I was very happy with how I was moving on the court, shot selection. Obviously, you know, I don't play doubles at that level against those guys too often, so I think on the returns, I could have done a bit of a better job of kind of timing it on the returns. Well done to Martin for getting his singles points on the board, and unfortunately, he couldn't make it happen in the doubles, but um, I'm going to be watching his, his comeback tour, and hopefully some of you guys 
will be as well. I'll leave the link to his Instagram down below if you want to go follow him. But uh, yeah, my first challenger, guys. I'm super happy with how I played, how it turned out. Obviously, not the result we wanted, but you know, I came in hoping, <laughs> hoping to, to get a few games and see what the level was like. And actually, I think the level's a lot closer to those guys who are 100, well, Mar Marcus, they're around 150 in the world than uh, I actually thought. So, gonna be good to play some more doubles on the Futures Tour and hopefully one day be playing at this level consistently, not only in doubles, but also in singles. Pretty late finish here, so gonna try and get, get some food in and uh, yeah, take a watch back of the match and see what I thought. Uh, be good to get some, some people's opinions of how I played. And so, that's it, my first ever Challenger tournament. If you enjoyed and if you wanna help support the channel, make sure you do go down there and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.